Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. This time it will be a bit uh, different tutorial than the other ones because uh, even if I'm doing a layer breakdown of uh, this design, I should mention from the start that uh, this is a collaboration between me and uh, Arian Visuals from Instagram. Uh, and uh, he started with this image, he, he sent it to me and uh, he said if I have different ideas I should continue and uh, by the end of the tutorial you will learn how I created uh, this design. So uh, I started from uh, his design, his idea, uh, everything that you see here is made by him. Uh, just uh, look him uh, up on uh, the Instagram and uh, give him a follow. He's a really, really cool uh, designer. All right, so let's start the tutorial and you should learn how to create this uh, fantasy time travel frame. We started with uh, this uh, mountain picture and then on top of it, uh, we added uh, another picture with the hills uh, and uh, we uh, added a mask, uh, this white thumbnail to the right you can add it by clicking on this little icon uh, here down below and then take the brush and be sure that the black color is selected and we uh, paint it down below with uh, sorry with the soft brush and uh, we uh, tried to hide the bottom area and then on this uh, on this picture we added a color balance and we changed the color to uh, something that's more green to match the colors of the other picture. And on top of uh, the other pictures we added this one with uh, the lake and uh, or river, I don't know what it is. And we added again a mask and with the black color selected with the brush and the black color selected we uh, painted and we masked the top and the bottom area and we have a nice background now. Then um, I first added this sky but uh, I changed my mind and uh, I remove it but I kept it uh, in the file anyway. Then when I finish with those three pictures we have a, a working background. I press Ctrl R Shift and I and I did a screenshot from all those three layers and I did that because if you look on top you'll see that our sky it's uh, not is not reaching the top of the file so after we did the screenshot we selected uh, this part of the sky with the rectangle marquee tool from here or press the letter m and then it's a shortcut for uh, this tool that photoshop has content aware scale so you either go to edit and then choose content aware scale or you just press ctrl alt c shift and C and then if you hold shift and drag the top area uh, Photoshop will uh, use the content aware and it will do this thing that uh, doesn't distort the that part that much anyway the sky <laughs> will going to change but uh, at that moment when I start working on the file I didn't know so I wanted to have a full picture uh, a full background Okay, so I, I did this uh, screenshot and then I added a mask to the screenshot and I remove uh, the sky that I just created. Yeah, so I added a mask to this uh, layer that I just created and then um, I, I noticed that here on the bottom area I have this uh, dead grass uh, part and uh, I just uh, went to this uh, new uh, layer and I copied with the elliptical marquee tool I copied an area uh, something like that uh, it's easy with ctrl C ctrl V and we managed to copy this area and I moved it uh, somewhere to the right and then I added a mask I click on this icon and with the brush selected and the black color I just painted on the margins of this layer and uh, here it is. I managed to hide that uh, area that I didn't like. So this is this oval that we have here. We just uh, mask that uh, that area that we didn't like. All right. Then um, everything was uh, too bright, and I tried to make it uh, darker. And then I wanted to change a bit uh, the tones of uh, this river the blue tones of this river um, there is not uh, there isn't that uh, big difference at this moment uh, it was something like that 
and after the selective color I modify the blues, I increase the, the magenta, yellow and black at maximum and I add the science. Alright, so, and then I added um, a hue and saturation that uh, now doesn't really make sense because um, we need this uh, sky uh, and then uh, you'll see that we need that uh, blue tones on our picture. So uh, this hue and saturation, uh, you can uh, click here and use hue and saturation, uh, adds more blue uh, tones to the top of uh, my picture because uh, of that uh, blue sky that we are going to add. And the same, uh, I wanted to have the top part uh, darker because I wanted to make a, a night scene. So I added the curves and I decreased uh, the lights. And then with the black color selected, I painted on the bottom area to keep the bottom area brighter and the top area darker. And then I did the same thing. I added uh, uh, levels this time and uh, uh, first it was like that and then I dragged this uh, slider more to the left and um, we did uh, the same thing with the brush, painted with black on top and we um, managed to have this uh, bottom area uh, more darker. Alright, so this is uh, what we have until now. Then I added this sky picture and I... Um, First it was like that, this is the picture and I added a mask and with the black color selected I painted on the bottom area with the black and uh, we uh, hide that uh, area. Alright, and then I added a Gaussian blur to this uh, uh, sky and made it uh, more blurry. You can do that by going to filter and then choose from this menu blur and choose Gaussian blur and you will have uh, this menu and I chose a uh, 5 pixel radius and as you can see our sky is blurred now. Alright, let's move on. I added uh, a hue and saturation and this part of our sky uh, which now it's uh, really blue, I added a uh, hue and saturation and I decrease the saturation uh, to that uh, blue. So this um, was like that and after I added the hue and saturation and painted with black on that area, um, the top part is uh, desaturated. Then uh, I thought that this sky is not uh, really that great and I added another one on top of it uh, and it looked uh, something like that. This is the file and then I added the same, a mask and I paint it uh, with a black color and uh, I hide uh, this bottom area, something like that. I know that uh, now it doesn't really look uh, well, but uh, bear with me, you'll see that uh, it will make sense. And then uh, I added uh, some fog. Uh, I explain in other tutorials how I create this fog. Uh, you create a new layer and then take uh, a cloud brush or a fog brush depending on what you have. I'll give you this brush also and then uh, with the brush selected, uh, just press Alt and select one of the colors that you already have on that background. Let's say this color and then you start to paint uh, and increase uh, increase the size. Then pick another color uh, close to the background colors and you keep, uh, keep it like that and just press. Uh, do not hold and, and paint. So what I'm going to do now is not okay. So I'm now I'm holding the mouse and I'm painting like that, left and right. You see, this is not uh, really okay. You have to press, you have to click and release, click and release. So pick a color with the Alt and then just click, click, and you can repeat that until you're satisfied with the result. So this is how I created the fog part over there. Then I wanted to have everything uh, darker, more darker again. So I added uh, an exposure this time. Uh, okay, so let me teach you how to do that if you didn't understand that until now. You go to the adjustment layers and you choose uh, exposure. And from here, let's uh, hide the other one. And from here, you decrease the exposure. Something like that. You make everything really dark. Take the brush tool. Uh, in my case, I kept this cloud brush. And be sure that the black color is selected. And now I'm going to... Where I'm painting with a black color, you see I'm painting with a black, that means that that area will remain unchanged. So where I'm painting, 
uh, that area will remain as it was and the rest will uh, be affected by, by the settings of my exposure all right so this is how i uh, did the, this uh, exposure uh, to uh, make everything darker but to keep uh, the interesting area uh, brighter then uh, after i created uh, this exposure layer i added a moon um, and i have it i think i have this moon from uh, benny's production uh, contest from last year the halloween contest he provided us the stock images i'll give it to you anyway so this is the moon that we have uh, here on top and then i added some uh, uh, glow um, first glow this is uh, the one with the screen so this is really easy just uh, create a new layer and you set the mode to screen to have a little glow so I'm uh, choosing screen from this menu and then with the brush selected in my case I will keep this uh, cloud brush and with this brush I'm going to paint slowly paint uh, near the, the moon and uh, yeah, I'm just clicking a few times and that's it. So this is the, the first glow, uh, this one. And then I wanted to have another one and I did the same thing, but this time uh, the mode was set to color dodge. So I clicked here and I chose uh, color dodge. And then I did the same thing with the white color selected and the brush and I painted uh, on that area. And that was it. Then I added uh, this tree uh, and I placed it uh, I know it looks weird now in the air, uh, but uh, I added a mask and I uh, painted, uh, slowly painted on the bottom area. This will be anyway not re that really visible because we will have some mushrooms uh, in front of the tree. So this is uh, how I added the tree uh, and then I uh, changed a bit the colors uh, with a selective color. I made it um, from the neutrals, I changed the science. Uh, and a bit the magenta and blacks and uh, I made it uh, the tree to look uh, more uh, brownish uh, reddish something like that and then I um, use the exposure and made it really really dark and um, you know how to do this just add an exposure adjust my layer and decrease the exposure then I added another one and I wanted to have um, more darkness on the bottom area here because uh, um, the tree doesn't have light uh, down below so that's again with the exposure I did the same thing that I just explained with the exposure and then I added another exposure and I wanted to have uh, more darkness but this time to the left part so I just wanted to have uh, the left part darker and the right side uh, brighter because we have the moon and it's supposed to have some light on the right side or our right side then in front of the, the tree we added those mushrooms and uh, underneath them we added uh, some shadow but uh, that won't be really that visible but I did it anyway. And um, of course the mushrooms doesn't, the mushroom don't look really well because they have too much light and I did the same thing, I decreased the lights on the mushrooms and uh, yeah, they, they look like that. Those are the preparation for the background. And now uh, let's move on to the much more interesting part. First we have this frame here. So let me explain you a bit how uh, I created this frame. Uh, first of all, uh, this frame uh, is a part of another picture which I already selected it. So that uh, was the original picture but uh, let's rotate it 90 degrees to the left. Alright, so that was the picture that I used and I cut the frame from here. It's uh, really easy. I um, played with the pen tool so I choose pen tool then I zoomed in and with the pen tool I just clicked and dragged and I managed to have a selection and then after I did the exterior part uh, of uh, this uh, frame all right I went uh, in the inside all right so this is um, the part with the frame uh, that I have in the design let's close it and then let me show you how I created this uh, perspective uh, part of the frame. Okay, so this is the original one. Uh, I press Ctrl and T and I uh, right click and uh, rotate it 90 degree 
doesn't matter clockwise or um, or counterclockwise uh, doesn't matter so I made it smaller and then I place it where I want it to be something like that let me hide the other one all right so this uh, is how I place the frame and then I press Ctrl T again and I hold Ctrl so now at this moment I'm holding Ctrl the Ctrl key and I'm dragging one of the bottom corners to the top and then the top uh, corner I'm dragging it to the left and I'm uh, trying to think at a nice perspective for uh, my frame so basically I'm holding control and I'm just dragging uh, the corners left and right uh, to match the perspective of my frame so after I finish uh, I uh, double clicked on the image and that uh, that was my my frame uh, and then uh, I right click and I convert it to a smart object then I click on the little icon with the mask, took the brush tool, again the same one with the clouds and with the black color selected uh, I uh, painted on the bottom area but the opac opacity should be 100% and I uh, hide uh, that uh, bottom area just like that. Alright and then I um, tried to change a bit the colors because it was too bright. Uh, first of all I added um, um, some uh, tones of uh, blue colors I know that the sky our sky is not that blue that much but I wanted to have a different color from the original one uh, and I did this one uh, in this mode I went to layer new layer and I selected from the menu linear dodge and I fill it with uh, black 100% opacity all right, and now I took uh, a soft brush and I choose the uh, blue color from the color picker, something like that. And um, with the flow around 3%, I paint in the, um, on this area, something like that. I know it looks weird now. And um, then I apply the blend if mode to this uh, linear dodge layer double click on the layer and hold alt and here down below just drag by holding alt drag this um, little slider to the right more and uh, when you are satisfied just release it and then press ok and as you can see uh, this little uh, change uh, makes uh, a lot of difference so this was uh, my layer that I did here with uh, the highlights I made a little blue on the sides of the frame and then of course I added uh, this exposure and made everything darker and then you know how to do it just paint on the mask with uh, the black color all right so we prepare the frame and then behind the frame uh, we have uh, of course an image from another world from another I don't know uh, we can uh, see this uh, frame like a time travel frame all right so we have uh, this uh, picture with the sea that uh, was uh, distorted to match our perspective so originally it was like that so this is the picture originally okay let's hide the other one and that was our picture press ctrl t and uh, make it uh, smaller something like that and now uh, press counter all control and drag the corners to have a perspective uh, something like that and uh, then when you're satisfied just uh, release and uh, let's say that uh, we uh, finished and then add a mask and with the black color selected just paint on the sides and increase the flow just paint on the sides uh, where you don't want that uh, part to be and keep what you want to keep and then I added a selective color now it makes sense with the color from the river for example and I change uh, the neutrals to have uh, more cyan to match the water from the sea or the ocean with our water from uh, the river all right and then I added uh, a sky on top uh, and that was the original picture of course I applied the uh, distort by holding control and drag the corners uh, something like that uh, just press control and T and drag the corners and you can have any angle that you want and then I added a mask 
and I kept only the part from the frame. So this is the area with the sky and the sea and then um, I added some water splashes. Uh, first one was this one to the side. Uh, this one I just place it there and I added a mask uh, and uh, I uh, hide the bottom area and uh, I kept only the top area of the water splash. And then I added uh, this uh, image with a boat. Originally the picture was like that and because it was because it was a bit complicated to use the object selection tool or the pen tool to hide all those parts, uh, I did something else. I uh, added a mask and I painted it with the black color around the, the ship. So let me do it again so you can see. Uh, so let, let's delete this one and add another one. So this was the picture with our boat, with our ship. So I took the brush tool with the black color selected and I decreased the flow under uh, 10% and I just uh, painted on the sides uh, something like that. And then I changed the mode to uh, soft light, something like that. And then I wasn't really satisfied with the result and I double clicked on the layer and I used the blend diff but this time uh, on the top area. So hold alt and drag the left uh, more to the, the left, the left slider and a bit the right slider. All right, so this is uh, how it uh, looked after I applied the blend diff. So this is uh, what we have until now. Um, and uh, let's move on with uh, adding the tiger. So uh, we have this uh, picture with the tiger. So this is the original picture with the tiger. Uh, we added a mask and we mask the top area and we kept the bottom area because the tiger is already in the water we had to change the colors to match it with our colors so um, let's go back uh, so originally it looked like that of course it doesn't look uh, realistic and then we added a selective color and we change uh, the neutrals and we try to match uh, that uh, water with our water all right and then i added uh, we added some levels to darken um, the left part of the tiger because the light comes from the right side. And uh, again, we added a color balance and uh, we change a bit the colors of uh, the tiger and uh, we try to make him more uh, uh, orange. And then we added another exposure and uh, made the left part darker, more darker. And then another selective color for just for the water uh, where we change the blues. So this is, uh, we decrease the yellow from that water and now um, what we have in the image looks the same, I mean the water looks the same. And then I added a dodge and burn, uh, the soft light method that I use in my tutorials. Uh, let me show you. Uh, you just go to the layer, new layer and here from the mode select soft light and fill it with 50% gray. And now take the brush tool and if you paint with the black color, you will make everything darker. And if you paint with the white color, you will make everything brighter. So now if I'm painting with the black color, you'll see it will darker, uh, darken those, those area of the tiger. Uh, it works uh, similar with the dodge and burn that uh, most uh, people use, but I'm using uh, this soft light. All right, and then uh, I added another curves and uh, this time I made everything brighter, not uh, darker, is right side. So the right side of the tiger, I made it uh, by using curves, uh, I made it uh, brighter. All right. And then I added uh, some blue uh, reflection on his right side. I just show you how to do that uh, with the linear dodge. So go to layer, new layer, choose linear dodge, fill it with uh, black and then hold Alt and clip it inside. Stick between the, the layers. You see this little icon now is gone. If I'm holding Alt, it will be back again. So what I did here, I just um, painted, took the brush tool and painted uh, with a blue color here on the right side, our right side, uh, something like that. All right, and then I just double click on the layer and I'm holding alt and drag this slider more to the right 
and uh, that was our blue base for the tiger. All right, so let's move on. This was uh, this layer, and then I know uh, in the final picture this uh, detail is uh, not visible, but because I'm really a perfectionist, I I love all those little de details. So if you look at uh, the tiger eyes you'll see that uh, they are not that really visible. So I made them uh, visible by adding a solid color set to overlay. So uh, I'm doing this uh, change like that, the eyes change like that, go to adjustment layers and select solid color. And here I'm selecting this color, for example, and uh, on the mask, select the mask, press Ctrl and I to invert it. And now the effect is gone. And now if I'm using the brush tool, but the white color it will make that effect visible where I'm painting so now if I'm painting uh, here on the eyes it will make that effect visible only on the eyes all right so it uh, looks <laughs> something like that but the mode should be set to overlay you see so this is uh, the change that I did uh, on the eyes part and now we have uh, the part with the woman with the lady and uh, she's already selected and an original photo was like that uh, she was in the garden and we selected it from uh, this background um, there are many ways to select a subject uh, the easiest one is uh, to go to this menu with the object selection tool and uh, just uh, select her by uh, using that object selection tool and photoshop will auto select her and uh, it will make a really nice selection and after that just press the mask and you'll have uh, a really nice selection uh, if you zoom in and you'll see uh, those areas that uh, weren't selected just uh, go to the lasso tool hold uh, shift and you'll see that plus thing on the lasso and if you select the parts that uh, weren't selected uh, photoshop will add them to the selection so this is the way you can add uh, to the selection and if you see parts that you don't want just hold alt not shift but alt and uh, Deselect those areas. So hold shift add to the selection hold alt and uh, Extract it from the selection. Yeah, so this is uh, how you select the subject All right, uh, so she's selected and then um, because uh, I didn't uh, you know all the time if you use uh, the selection it's uh, the hair it's almost impossible to select so that's a really good thing for us because we are learning how to draw uh, hair in the following weeks i will make a new tutorial just uh, for the hair but uh, let me quickly show you what i created here so this was the hair that i drew and i place it uh, on top of uh, her picture right so this is the hair uh, usually if you want to make uh, changes to the colors so if you want to match her colors with the background do not apply yet the selective color or uh, color balance or whatever you are using because if you are drawing hair you need to apply that effect to the hair part also so uh, as you can see uh, the model doesn't have any um, adjustments uh, applied to her yet so this is the hair um, I just painted on top of her hair uh, manually and then um, I added uh, in her hand a uh, scepter something like a uh, staff uh, and uh, it looked uh, something like that yeah I could have uh, added a shadow underneath the staff I forgot to do it but let's do it now uh, just uh, create a new layer and set the blending mode to multiply and uh, hold alt and choose a darker color from uh, her dress which is this green greenish uh, color and then I paint I uh, can paint uh, underneath that uh, stuff something like that not too much yeah so now it looks uh, much much better all right we are going to keep it like that over there and uh, let's uh, let's move on uh, yeah so if the stuff sorry I forgot to explain you this uh, normally the stuff was like that it's a PNG file I just added a mask uh, let me erase this one and I added a mask and with the brush tool selected this time the hard brush and the flow set to 100% I painted uh, with the black color selected I painted on the sides and I made uh, this uh, staff uh, or whatever it is uh, scepter to look like she's holding it 
and with uh, the exposure I made it uh, darker. So uh, this is really simple with the exposure, just decrease the exposure and uh, with the mask you can uh, keep some parts uh, brighter or darker if you want. All right, and then uh, I added everything into a group. So the hair and the scepter and the shadow and the model. And then uh, I place everything into a group. And I added that uh, dodge and burn that I just uh, showed you. Uh, and I wanted to have her um, back and our right side, her right side darker. And then with the selective color, now I uh, try to match her colors by changing the neutrals and I match her colors with the colors of the background by changing some uh, settings here with the colors. All right, and then I added some uh, purple. Uh, I know it doesn't really make sense, but uh, I just want to have uh, a bit of uh, di diversity on her hair and uh, clothes. And then uh, you know how to do this. This is the linear dodge I just, uh, that I just explained you. Uh, don't forget to go to layer new layer and here choose the linear dodge and fill it with black and after that just paint with the orange color or purple color or whatever color do you want uh, and um, after you are painting it uh, around her just double click on the layer and hold alt and drag as you can see she looked normally like that i painted with a purple uh, blue color and i holding alt and drag the slider to the right and then press ok and then I did the same thing with the orange this time because she will have some magic coming from uh, this uh, scepter. Uh, and uh, I did the same thing. If you want, let's uh, let's do it again. So go to layer, new layer. As I said, choose linear dash, fill it with black. And uh, now with the orange color selected, um, let's hide the other one. So now with the orange color, but be sure the flow is really low around 3-4%. Uh, just uh, I think this is uh, too bright uh, let's choose another orange something more to the yellow and uh, the soft brush should be selected not the hard brush all right so I painted with uh, this orange on the sides where I thought that the light should uh, bounce on her body and uh, scepter and a bit on uh, the dress all right so this is the orange and I double clicked on the layer and I apply the blend if so hold alt and drag the slider until the light is dispersed on her. All right, so this is the orange base that I created here. And then uh, I added uh, some orange highlights using the same method, but without the blend if. So if I'm painting, the effect will remain uh, like that. I want to disperse the light. So those are the orange uh, highlights that I have just painting on uh, the sides of the model. All right, and then on top of all of this, I added another layer, another linear dodge, and I made the uh, white highlights. Let me quickly show you how I'm creating those highlights, white highlights. In all my tutorials, I explain that. So usually my process is like that. First, I make a base with the colors that we have around the subject. And then at the end, I finish with adding the white highlights. So let me demonstrate you really quickly. So go to layer and then select uh, linear dodge, fill it with black, all right. And then with the brush selected, this time the uh, white color, and uh, you just paint the same on the sides, something like that. But the flow should be around 10% this time. All right, and now if I'm painting with the white color, you'll see that it will add uh, those uh, white uh, highlights. So I'm uh, looking at her dress also, and I'm trying to keep uh, the lines that uh, she has on the dress. And of course, uh, the light should be only on the, the left side, uh, her and our left side. Um, so this is how I create those uh, highlights. Let's erase them and bring them back. And then um, let's zoom out. I added this orange glow on top uh, of uh, everything. And this is set to overlay. So let me explain you. Create a new layer and set it to overlay. And then with the orange color, just um, take the brush tool again and uh, paint on top. Uh, but uh, let's change the flow to 2%. I'm painting uh, on her body, the scepter. And uh, at the end, I'm painting on the ground because that magic that we'll have will reflect on the ground also. And then I double clicked on the layer 
and uh, I'm holding Alt and I'm dragging this slider more to the right and that uh, that was it all right so this is the orange glow that we have and behind her I created uh, a shadow that uh, won't be that visible after we are adding the flowers or what we are going to have but uh, this is easy just uh, draw with a layer set to multiply uh, the shadow and then you can decrease the opacity if you want and then I added this orange glow uh, behind her so this is the orange glow uh, really easy just create a new layer and set it to color dodge and then with the brush selected if you are painting uh, it will um, let me zoom in I'm painting now and not too much something like that uh, it makes uh, her stand up uh, much much better than before so after we finish with the lady and the tiger and uh, the rest we added uh, a small uh, dove uh, here on the right side and I made uh, an exposure I added exposure and make him uh, make the dove uh, darker a dodge and burn and uh, of course some uh, highlights using the same linear dodge and uh, don't forget the, the blend if to disperse the, the light by holding alt and dragging the slider to the right and then I added another highlights this time uh, the white highlights this one that I drew after I finish with the orange highlights all right so this is what I did here and then I wanted to break a bit the the frame by adding something uh, on top and we uh, added uh, those seagulls and um, of course I added exposure and make them a bit darker to our right side and because they have the, this light coming from the left uh, they should be darker on the right side all right and then let's move on uh, let's zoom out first okay and now uh, we added uh, those flowers and uh, they um, sorry they look like that originally and I placed it uh, them down below and I added a mask and with the grass uh, brush I uh, loose them uh, into our grass and then because our grass was blurry I added a Gaussian blur and I made them blurry also let's duplicate this layer by pressing Ctrl and J and uh, let's delete everything and do it again from the top so this is uh, the layer that we have and if you want to lose the flowers into our grass just add a mask and let's take the grass brush and then with the brush set to the flow set to 100% you are painting on the bottom area with this brush that imitates the the grass and uh, yeah this is how we managed to lose the flowers into the grass uh, go on the thumbnail with the flowers go to filter blur blur Gaussian blur and uh, with an amount of 2% let's say it okay and uh, yeah the flowers look uh, more realistic now and I place them uh, in front of her all right and then I make the I added another exposure and uh, I made the right side of the flowers darker and I kept the left part uh, brighter and then I added a small uh, orange yellow color on the left because we'll have that magic on her hands on the scepter all right and then um, on the left side I added uh, this rock and um, first our rock was like that already selected and I added a Gaussian blur again you know go to filter blur and choose Gaussian blur the only thing that we needed was uh, the exposure uh, to make the left side darker and to keep the right side uh, brighter and then we added a dodge and burn I just showed you how to do that uh, just uh, paint uh, with uh, the soft brush and black selected just paint and uh, of course the flow should be like three four percent uh, you paint on the left side and uh, it will make that uh, side darker all right then I made another copy of the flowers and I placed them in, uh, in front or in the back depending how you see this of this rock and uh, I applied the same uh, Gaussian blur uh, the exposure and uh, yeah they look like that over there and uh, I kept uh, this little frog also from the original design and then with the butterflies uh, they were um, 
place like that on the original design uh, around the water and I uh, change their location um, I place them around the rock a few of them and one uh, I placed him uh, on top of our uh, uh, lady and I made uh, and I grouped them inside the group and I added another exposure and I make them darker and then I made them uh, brighter by this time using uh, curves adjustment layer all right so those were the butterflies and um, then I added um, this branch on top and I just added uh, an exposure and made it uh, darker after I finished with everything uh, I uh, thought that we need something that breaks uh, the frame and I added those uh, rays um, it's uh, a layer that comes from the uh, frame and it continues until it reaches our woman so originally it looked like that those were the the frames that uh, the rays of light that we have and um, then I apply the mask and keep the only the part that comes from the frame. If you see the design like that, you think like uh, it's not finished. Of course, it's not finished because the overall colors and uh, I don't know, uh, things are not really matching that well together. Um, you'll be amazed by uh, this uh, camera row filter that Photoshop has for us. It does uh, wonders. So just take a look at this. Uh, if I'm clicking on the on this layer of the camera row, these are the changes that uh, we have. So this uh, camera row, it's amazing. All right, so let me explain what we have here. Uh, let's uh, go to the camera row. So when you finish with uh, everything into your uh, design or photo manipulation, you need to play with this camera row. This is a must, or at least for me, it's a must. All my designs, when I finish them, I use camera row to make everything group together much, much better. All right, so uh, if you are sure that you are finished, just press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and I and you will do a screenshot from uh, everything that you have until now. So this is uh, one single layer from all the layers. And then right click, this is uh, really important, and convert it to a smart object. That means that every filter that you are applying now uh, you can come back later and modify it but if you are not using uh, smart objects and you apply any filter uh, you lose uh, any settings that that filter has you cannot modify anything later all right so when you did this uh, smart object thing go to filter and from here choose camera row filter all right so those are the settings that i used as i said in my previous tutorials when we have a darker or a night scene Usually I increase the exposure and contrast, the, so the first two I'm increasing and then I'm decreasing the highlights and the whites and I'm increasing the, the shadows first. And blacks, usually I increase the blacks also, but this time uh, I uh, prefer them to keep them uh, on the negative side. And then I increase the texture and clarity and uh, uh, the haze in this case. And I decrease the vibrance and uh, I increase a bit the saturation. On the curves... Uh, not too much I increase a bit the lights as you can see I dragged this uh, line a bit to the the left but not too much and on the detail I increase the sharpening noise reduction and color reduction color night noise reduction and on the effects I added some small grain and that was it and on the calibration I changed the blues I increased the hue and the saturation on the blues all right so those are the things that we did here with the camera row after I apply the camera row, I added another filter which is uh, Tilt Shift Blur. So go to Filter, Blur Gallery and choose Tilt Shift Blur. So I use this filter because I wanted to have some realistic blur in our uh, photo manipulation. So basically uh, you'll have this, uh, those guides when you open uh, Tilt Shift Blur. So uh, let me quickly explain you what you have inside this uh, rectangle from the center. It will remain un unchanged if you are increasing the blur. So now I uh, have the blur at maximum, for example. So what's inside this uh, rectangle, it will remain the same. And uh, if you are dragging those uh, lines uh, that, that are not straight, those dashing lines, if you are dragging, you see it will drag the blur also. So uh, this is really important uh, to drag to have this blur uh, 
you know not that uh, strong so I, I decreased the blur uh, and I wanted to have blur here on the bottom area and on the top area and the center should be uh, unchanged so this is what I did with the, the blur and then uh, I have many many tutorials where I explain how I create the magic uh, you can uh, watch them uh, even my previous tutorial has uh, the explanations uh, and uh, the one I think I have two or three um, tutorials on my channel where I explain how I create this magic that I learned from uh, Max Asabin and from Nemanja Sekulic. Alright, so this is the magic that um, I created coming from her scepter and uh, I played a bit with the colors and I had uh, this orange and blue and white on uh, this uh, part of the magic. And uh, at the end, when I finished everything, uh, I decided to add uh, more highlights uh, on my uh, elements and I just did this linear dodge set to 100% black and I painted with a white uh, brush uh, on some parts of uh, my design. Uh, as you can see, these white uh, highlights are doing an amazing job. So let me quickly show you how I did that. So go to layer, new layer and uh, choose linear dodge, fill it with black and then um, take the brush tool, make it really small, white color and the flow should be around 10% or even less. And for example, on the tiger part, uh, let's decrease the size. And now if I'm painting here with the white color, you'll see that it will add a small glow to that uh, part of the tiger. And uh, that highlight I really like to do when I'm finishing with all the parts of my design. So actually this is what I'm doing. I'm doing the this white drawing on the sides uh, where the light uh, should uh, touch his body. Uh, something like that. And uh, then on the waves where I see some uh, lines, for example here and here, I'm drawing on top of them with this white color, uh, but as I said, not too much, uh, around, uh, you know, eight or even less uh, flow. So yeah, this is uh, what I did. I just painted on my design after I finished and here on the boat, I painted with white on the sides and um, that effect uh, that uh, I will have after I finish with uh, this linear dodge will be much nicer than without having it. So here also I did the same thing uh, on the model. I painted with that uh, white, uh, as I said, not too much. So this is what I'm doing when i uh, finishing my designs here also on the magic. I painted with the white uh, to make this uh, pop up even more. Uh, so where I had the, the yellow color, I uh, paint on top of it with the, the white color to make that effect uh, even more visible. And same here on her hands and, uh, and so on. Uh, so yeah, you have to, to paint around where you have your object to blend them better with your design. So uh, just look around here on the dove also. I did the same thing. I painted uh, with this uh, white, something like that. Uh, and then uh, on the seagulls, uh, on the, the sides, something like that. Now, of course, I'm doing it uh, really fast, but uh, this design took me one day to finish. So you have to understand me why I cannot do everything now in this tutorial. All right. So this is what I did with those highlights and I um, used uh, them also on the leaves here. On the right side of the leaves, I uh, painted with this uh, white also. Uh, yeah, that took me a lot of time because there are a lot of leaves here and also on uh, the butterflies on uh, the sides where the light uh, I thought that uh, will touch uh, their bodies. Alright, so those are the highlights that I did uh, at the end. Let, uh, let's bring them back. And um, I added uh, this high pass and of course uh, our names, I placed them here on the frame uh, on top. Ariane, it's a... Uh, really nice guy and uh, he had a really cool idea that I used to create this design uh, and of course we should be mentioned here on the frame time travel frame all right and then I added this high pass it's uh, a thing that I'm doing to have more sharpening on my images uh, when I'm finishing I always add uh, this high pass so press ctrl shift and I again 
it will make a screenshot of uh, everything go to filter choose other high pass and here choose uh, 0.3 or 0.5 and then if you set this uh, normal to linear light it will look like that so let me zoom in to i don't know to the the lady uh, and she looks like that with the high pass and without the high pass it looks like that so as you can see this uh, adds a lot of sharpening to the images you know it depends on the tastes you can uh, leave it like that it's uh, more like a painting like that but with the high pass uh, makes everything uh, much uh, sharpened all right and then uh, i wanted to have the center of our image uh, uh, brighter and i added this exposure and kept everything in the center uh, brighter and everything outside the center i uh, kept it uh, darker so i um, i really love arian's idea he started it, this design with a lot of elements here and um, even if they looked really well uh, i had uh, a bit different idea and i changed it uh, first of all to the portrait not to the landscape changed the frame also and the uh, positioning of uh, the tiger for example and um, other elements that uh, he had and i uh, drew again the hair and uh, i have uh, modified some things of course this design is also great i love it uh, but when you do a collaboration uh, things change and uh, you know uh, starting from this one i uh, created this one even if uh, we had uh, almost let's say almost the same elements uh, the result is really really different so um, i really enjoy doing collaborations if you uh, you think that uh, you want to do a collaboration with me just uh, look me on uh, instagram look me up on my instagram account and give me a message and maybe we will do a collaboration together of course it's free someone asked me if i'm asking money for collaboration no i will never ask money for collaborations because when you do a design together with another designer you evolve a lot and you help each other to grow even more so that's uh, for me a uh, much higher goal than money all right so that was the tutorial for today i hope that you enjoy it uh, and uh, see you next time